use headphones for best experience. First, I'd like to show you that um, I have my content also on music streaming platforms, such as Apple Music, as you can see here. And I have a new album here, uh, the Egyptian Hieroglyphs Carving, the audio from that video. And um, I'm planning to upload a lot of new content on my audio streaming platforms as well. Um, here you can see, um, on uh, Spotify, I have uh, this one that I recorded quite recently, focusing detailed on Closed Railways Ramble Part 1. And um, this is content that I'm recording audio only for these platforms. So you can find them on Spotify, Apple Music and other uh, podcast platforms and music streaming platforms. And there will be more like this. And this one is also, you can also find it on YouTube if you want to listen to the audio from YouTube. Today I would like to draw a map of the Roman Empire in the year 117 AD. And why I have chosen this year is because uh, this is the year when the Empire reached its maximum extent. So I will start with some loose sketching here. Quite central part this map will be the Mediterranean Sea.
looks more like a, like a map of Europe, or at least southern Europe and northern Africa. safari pen. I have used it in, in some other videos in the past. So let's start here in the west, the western coast of the Roman Empire, the Atlantic coast. start here in modern day France 
Bretagne, Normandie. The Strait of Dover, English Channel. The southern British coast, Cornwall, Wales. not part of the Roman Empire, I will include it here on the map. As well as um, Germany and Netherlands. some coast here as well. Denmark. Let's go on with the Atlantic coast. Bay of Biscay. Northern Spain. Andalusia, the Spanish Mediterranean coast, the French coast. Italian coast, Adriatic Sea and the Croatian coast. Hold 
расслабления грейс The southern coast, the Black Sea, Turkey, Anatolian Peninsula. The Turkish coast to the Aegean Sea. This Greek island thing. Sicily Island and Malta Sardinia To the far east, we have 
Baltic Sea. So the Red Sea here. some rivers and then I'm gonna use blue color and uh, I got the idea to to use this uh, deep pen calligraphy pen and ink blue ink for rivers because rivers to show to show like for example the northern border of the Roman Empire at this point was defined uh, uh, by two long rivers the, the Rhine and the Danube River for example so let's start with those two rivers We should have the Danube here, starting in the Alps here. The Rhine as well. Maybe like this. And the Danube. So ending up in this very big delta in the Mediterranean Sea. Also here to the east we have uh, the very famous rivers Tigris and Euphrates. Start here. The Tigris.
to the north. We have Dnipro through modern day Ukraine. Ending up in Black Sea as well. Sinister between or in Moldova, I think. start here with Olt River in Romania. The Carpathians Mountains. The Moresh River in Western Romania. Eastern Alps joining um, Danube here. It's the Saba River. As you can see from the Alps, there are a lot of rivers having their sources there, of course, because it's very high mountainous area here. In Europe, we should have the Brenta River. from the Western Alps we have the Po River in Italy here we have a quite famous river small but famous it's the Rubicon famous 
Timeless when it comes to the history of Rome. And uh, here, through the city of Rome, Rome, we have the Tiber. And let's move to the west. See what we have. So here we have the Moselle River. should have Loire through front like this and Rhone southern front Southern France, we have a uh, Caron. Starting here in the Pyrenees. And the Iberian Peninsula. We can start with Ebro River. I think I have read that Ebro. River um, it was actually the reason why why the peninsula is called the Iberian Peninsula. Now, 
Let's see how it looks so far. So this is the area of the Roman Empire in 117 AD. Um, now I should add some provinces, I think. Because the Roman Empire was divided into several provinces. And they are not really corresponding with with uh, today's borders, today's country's borders. So it will be nice to compare and see what what are the areas today. Um, the provinces at this point, what has happened to that area since then, and to which country does it belong, and everything. And I would like to continue to use the calligraphy pen. And to use this green ink for the province's border. Let me first zoom in a bit. So, let's start to the very west. And here we have the province Lusitania. Duro River here. And um, it's not exactly today's border between uh, Portugal and Spain. I'm not sure if, if Duro River. I think the modern border is more to the north here, but I'm not sure. Actually, the border should be here. Because uh, this is today's border between Portugal and Spain, and um, the border between the provinces, Lusitania and uh, Hispania Baetica also a bit more to the east. So here we have Lusitania. So also includes part of Extremadura here. And uh, Castilla y Leon. Today's Andalusia in Spain, southern Spain, Paetica or Hispania Paetica. What's the name of the province? And the Paetica was a senatorial province at this point. Lusitania and this big province here that I will draw now, following something that looks quite much like the modern border between uh, France and Spain. So this big province is uh, Taraconensis. And 
and Tarakolensis and Lusitania were imperial provinces. And you can find the imperial provinces more um, more at the the far I mean the in on the boundaries of the empire. Um and in the center of the empire, for example around Rome, there were the senatorial provinces. The senatorial provinces um had the Roman Senate. The Roman Senate had the rights to appoint the governor. And in the imperial provinces at the boundaries, uh, it was the Roman Emperor that had the sole right to appoint the governor. So it was some some um, differences between those types of provinces. But Baetica, even though it's quite far from the center, from Rome, it was an, a senatorial province. Another senatorial province was uh, Narbonensis here. Southern France today. Um, in Arbonensis, there were all the, the today's uh, French Mediterranean coast. And there were three very small provinces here. In the Alps. French, Italian, Swiss Alps here. For example, this one around the lake Geneva. This one is called Alpes Puenia. Puenia. And the second one here is called Alpes Cotia, and the third one is called Alpes Maritime. And they were all imperial provinces, even though they were quite close to Rome, actually. But then we have the complete border here. Northern border of Narbonensis, this senatorial province here. I guess um, where the border between France and Italy is today. Fran modern day France was divided into several Roman provinces. doing This border here is wrong. This is a Germania Superior, part of today's Germany, and maybe also part of France here, I guess. Because here we have the Rhine River, here we have Moselle River. And 
this province to the very north, the empire. is uh, Germania inferior, so inferior and superior. This must have been the German provinces, I mean what's today Germany. Here were the German, Germanic tribes. And this province here is called Belgica, parts of Belgium I guess. Or big, it looks a bit bigger than today's Belgium, actually. So Belgium, France, Germany, perhaps. And then we have the two main provinces in today's France. It's basically. The southern province called Aquitania. The name is uh, used today as well for the province, I guess. And uh, this northern province was called Lugdunensis. Lugdunensis, imperial province. All these provinces were imperial ones. And uh, on British Island, we have Britannia. I mean Great Britain, the island is called. Uh, and uh, there was a very defined border here between the Roman Empire and the province of Britannia, following the the Hadrian's Wall. The Hadrian's Wall was constructed as a defense for for the people here in Caledonia, today Scotland. Hadrian was a Roman emperor, and uh, this wall was built in AD 122. And let's continue with the uh, provinces to the east. border follows the Danube. To this point, then it follows the Moorish over here. in the Carpathians here somewhere should have the border between Italia province, senatorial province, and Raetia in today's Switzerland, I guess, Germany. And 
ist auf Reit, ja. Let's see, we have... These two imperial provinces are part of Pannonia. I think in the past there were one province called Pannonia. But at this point, 117 AD, it was uh, divided into Pannonia Superior to the west and Pannonia Inferior to the east. The southern borders of Pannonia follows the Sava River. Okay. This is Italia. So here is Pannonia Superior, Pannonia Inferior. Then we have Dalmatia. Also two provinces named Moesia. Border between Moesia Superior, this one, and Dacia. Inferior to the east, we have Thracia. I think the English pronunciation of these are usually maybe Thracia, Dalmatia, Dacia, but I think the Roman pronunciation is more like Dacia, Dalmatia, Thracia. The Roman pronunciation is more more close to the Swedish, how I would pronounce it, with, if I see the word, yes, so I will continue using that pronunciation, I think. In modern day Greece, we have the three senatorial provinces Macedonia, Epirus, Achaia and all 
of these provinces were imperial provinces. Here in the Bosphorus. of Anatolia Peninsula. So in the northern part along the Black Sea coast we have Bithynia et Pontus. He was called Pontus Euxinus. Latin. Then I think this province that I'm going to show now is quite interesting. I guess it could. maybe. have something to do with the. The today's name of the continent Asia because this is called just Asia or Asia. The western part of Anatolian Peninsula. And Asia and Bithynia at Pontus were senatorial provinces, just like these three uh, around the um, Aegean Sea and Union Sea. Then we have a lot of imperial provinces to the very east, the far east of the Roman Empire. Start here with Lycia et Pamphylia. Lycia et Pamphylia. Et means and, I guess, so Lycia and Pamphylia. And here along the southern coast of Anatolia we have Kilikia or Cilicia maybe because it's spelled with C and here in the center I guess mountainous region highland here around Ankara we have Galatia and here we have the historical region here the southeastern coast of the Black Sea Cappadocia I think that Cappadocia is traditionally this area here the mountains as well and then let's follow the Euphrates River for a while here Syria. And here around Jer Jerusalem we have Eud 
dir. And to the very southeast. We have Arabia Petraea. Here's Petra city. Today's Egypt. Around the Nile we have uh, Egyptus, Imperial Province. So all these Eastern province, provinces were Imperial. Then we have Senatorial Province in Northern Africa. This one is called uh, Kyrenaika et Kreta. Uh, spelled with C, so maybe Siren, Sirene, Sirenaika. I don't know exactly. Cyrene is a city called here. So maybe I should call it Sirenaika. Something like that. At Kreta. Kreta is this island. I think if you want to pronounce it like in Latin, uh, how, how it was pronounced in Latin by this time, I think you just should basically read it, all the letters, pronounce them as they, as they are. And all the C will be K, K sound. I'm not completely sure. I think this word, Cyrenaica, Kirenaika, was a quite tricky word to pronounce. So I'm really not sure how to do it. Here we have another interesting name for a province. It's, it's a very long, thin senatorial province called uh, Africa or Africa Proconsularis. And uh, just like Asia, this province called Asia. Uh, this name could be the origin of the whole continent, Africa, I think. So the Romans named this area, the area closest to Rome, of course, that they had a lot of contact with and wars, wars uh, against the Carth Carthaginians. Carthage was here, the city. So they called this uh, area, this land, Africa. And we have two more provinces here to the southwest, Atlas Mountains here. Today is uh, Morocco. And that's uh, Mauritania Tingitana and Mauritania Caesariensis or Caesariensis. 
Caesar, I guess, was uh, pronounced Kaiser, since it's uh, spelled with a C. But we are so used to say Caesar today. But actually, if you say the the word Caesar, I mean the the leader of, of an empire in Swedish, it's Caesar, and um, it's spelled with a K. So. So it's a bit different the uh, pronunciation of Caesar and Caesar. And then we have three more provinces to the very east. And these three were not Roman provinces for very long. But just around the time 117 AD, they actually were Roman provinces. So that's why this, um, that makes this uh, year. Um, that's why you can choose this year when you want to talk about the maximum extent of the Roman Empire. Yes, then these three provinces were included as well, just for two, three years or something. And it's Armenia. It's Mesopotamia. around the Euphrates and north of the Tigris it's Assyria Let's take a look how the entire map looks by now. as well. And I would like to use some ink for doing that. And I have some red ink that I would like to use for the senatorial provinces. And some green ink for the imperial provinces. And some water.
not sure how much ink I should have. Oh, this ink is actually dry. Not sure I can use it. See how this will work. I haven't tried this before. And let's start with the red senatorial provinces. Corresponding quite much to today's Italy. And uh, Rome started its expansion from the city-state Rome, of course. Uh, according to the legend, the city of Rome was founded in 750, I think, BC, by Romulus, who killed his brother. But that's a legend. And um, but the, uh, the city state was ruled by kings in the beginning, so the period 625, something like that, to five. 110 BC is referred to as the period of the kings of Rome. And for a long time, uh, Rome was only the city state by the Tiber River. But then um, it became a republic. In 510 BC, ruled by uh, by the upper class senators and knights called the patricians, and there were a lot of battles between the the tribes around around here. For example, the Etruscans, the Greek, and the Celts. And Rome started to expand. And uh, today this region in Italy is called Lazio. Latium, it was called in, in the ancient days. And I guess that's where the, the name of the, of the language comes from. Latin. Lazio. Latium. The language spoken here in this area.
so around 290 BC the, the state had expanded to almost all of central Italy, Italian peninsula like this the northern limit was uh, the Rubicon River here because north of the Rubicon River were the Gauls and um, it was not part of Rome from the from the start. Rome was more here in the center. But then between two hundred and eighty and two hundred seventy five BC there were something called the Pyrrhic Wars. And uh, Pyrrhus was the king of Epirus, Epirus here in Greece. And uh, then the Romans conquered. Um, this part of southern Italy from Greek from Greece. Then we have the the Punic Wars. During the Punic Wars Rome expanded a lot. There were three wars. The first Punic War in two hundred sixty four to two hundred forty one BC. And then they were fighting against the Carthaginians. Carthage was the city here, and the Carthaginians' empire land was all around the western Mediterranean Sea. And they were here, as well as the Greeks. The Greeks have been traveling also all around the Mediterranean Sea, being here in the in the eastern coast of Iberian Peninsula, for example. But yeah, Carthage was very close to Rome, if you travel by sea. And there were a lot of wars here going on. And during the First Punic War, after the First Punic War, uh, Rome conquered Sicily. Maybe not the southern part, called Syra Syracuse. I'm not sure, I've seen maps where Syracuse is still independent or another type of region, not part of Rome. But I'm not sure exactly what happened there. And also Rome conquered the islands Sardinia and Corsica. the First Punic War. And in the Second Punic War, Rome conquered parts of Iberia. And I think the first Roman colony here was uh, Taraco. in 220 BC. The Second Punic War took place 218 to 201 BC. But yeah, it, maybe it started here in 220 BC, something like that. Uh, around today's Tarragona. It's the oldest Roman settlement in today's Spain. Actually, Tarraconensis was an imperial province, so I will try now with the green color.
start were early and there were two provinces in Spain, Roman Spain, called the Hispania Citerior here to the north and Hispania Ulterior. And these were Roman provinces between 197 BC until 19 BC. And then there were some some changes here in the in the provinces. So then after that we have the provinces seen on this map, the Terraconensis, this very big province here. And Lusitania to the west and Baetica to the south. And we have a lot of Roman remains here to can visit in Tarragona, in Toledo, Cad Cadiz, Merida, for example. But maybe I will point out some cities and uh, sites where with the Roman remains later, last on this map. Let's continue to fill the, the provinces with some color. Hispania Baetica to the south was a senatorial province. Also Narbonensis, southern France. Along the uh, Rhone River and Côte d'Azur. But yeah, also during the Second Punic War, uh, there were the Mac Macedonian Wars between 214 and 205 BC. And there were actually two Macedonian Wars. And um, after the Second Macedonian War, that one ended in 196 BC. Macedonia became a Roman province. It was a battle between Rome and Philip the, the Fifth, Philip the Fifth, Kingdom of Macedonia. And I'm not sure how the provinces looked in the start after the war, but. In 117 AD, there were three provinces here. All of them were senatorial. So Macedonia to the north, Epirus to the west, and Achaia to the south, east. With Athens and Corinth. I think also part of the coast of Dalmatia was conquered as early as in the uh, Macedonian Wars, around 214 BC, something like that. But not the entire Dalmatia. And in the Third Punic War, 
took place between 149 and 146 BC. Then finally there were the siege of Carthage. So Romans defeated the Carthaginians for all time. The Carthaginians who had a very long history here in this part of the world. Descendants from Phoenicians who invented the Phoenician alphabet and yeah, it's a lot of very interesting history about Carthaginians, Carthage. But then uh, this became a province of Rome, Africa, or Africa Proconsularis, along the North African coast. And uh, this uh, province here, Cyrenaica et Creta, in today's, uh, what could it be, Libya, perhaps, was a senatorial province, so I will fill it with a red color here. of course, Crete. And then we have uh, Asia. This province was annexed in uh, 133 BC, quite early as well. Cyprus was also a senatorial province, so the Greek world was um, conquered quite early and then became the senatorial provinces to the east. And uh, Italy, north of Rubicon River, this part, northern Italy. This area was called Gallia Cisalpina, or Cisalpina, or the Cisalpine Gaul. So there were Gauls here, and uh, it was conquered uh, during the Second Punic War, around uh, 200 BC. And from the beginning it was like uh, a province with some um, yeah, an autonomous province somehow and not completely ruled by Rome. But then sometime I think in 42 BC, in 42 BC that's uh, almost uh, at the end of the, of the Republic public era, in the beginning of the empire, then um, these provinces were merged together, Italia and uh, uh, Cisalpine Gaul, or Cisalpine Gaul, and it became just Italia. And that was just right after the other 
Gaul provinces had been conquered by Rome. Julius Caesar was a general. The end of the Republic uh, era. Who led the Gallic Wars. 58 to 50 BC and uh, yeah then Rome was very successful and had defeated the Gauls so the Gauls were here they were here this is the uh, old Gauls area so in Gallia this area is called Gallia and we have Gallia, Germania, Belgica, Lugdunensis, Aquitania, Narbonensis and uh, Nar Narbonensis became a uh, senatorial province not sure why but maybe because that one was close to, closest to Rome Closest to Italy. That's my guess. So Julius Caesar is famous for a lot of things, but um, during his time. him as a military leader. Rome expanded a lot in Gaul. And um, there were a lot of civil wars during this time in Rome as well. And um, I'm not sure now what happened. But at some point, uh, Julius Caesar crossed the Rubicon, and that uh, has been like a famous expression for for reaching the point of no return. Um, crossing a border and you can't go back. And then started a civil war between him, between Julius Caesar and uh, the other famous general this time Pompey the Great and both these generals played a significant role in um, the transformation from Roman Republic to the Roman Empire because uh, there was a battle here somewhere in Dyrrachium Dyrrachium in today's Albania in 48 BC. I think um, Julius Caesar defeated Pompey here and uh, then after that Julius Caesar became a dictator of Rome. So they were, before they were always uh, more than one leader, there were two or maybe three very powerful generals and statesmen. For example, the first triumvirate, Julius Caesar and um, and uh, Pompey were part of. But yeah, uh, Julius Caesar became a dictator, and uh, then he was killed a couple of years later during all these uh, civil wars taking place. And a couple of years later, in 27 BC, I think, the first emperor of Rome, Augustus, was crowned. And his name was Octavius, but he, when he became emperor, he, he took the name Augustus.
We have another senatorial province here, the northern Anatolian peninsula, the Bithynia et Pontus. I think Pontus means sea. Pontus euxinus is uh, the Black Sea, but I don't think euxinus is, is uh, means black. It's something about uh, um, calm sea or something, euxinus. Not sure exactly what, what it means. But sea could also be mare, mare internum, or... Mare Nostrum is uh, the Roman's name for for the Mediterranean Sea. Ma Mare Nostrum is our sea. But before uh, Rome became an empire some expansions to the east around 64 BC there were the the Roman Persian Wars for example there were a lot of Roman Persian Wars they started in like 54 BC and uh, I read that 64 BC uh, something happened in this area and it was uh, General Pompey, who, yeah, before he he was killed here in 48 BC, in 64 BC, he um, took control over this area after the fall of the Seul Seleucid Empire, I think. The Seleucid Empire was here, in today's Syria, southern Turkey, yeah, here in the Middle East. But it fell in 64 BC and then it became controlled by Rome. And in 117, the year that this map is showing, we had the province of Syria and the Cilicia or Kilikia. Lycia et Pamphylia, Galatia, the mountainous regions here, and Cappadocia. Judea, Arabia, Petraea. BC. 30 BC was the year when the Egyptian kingdom, the Ptolemaic kingdom, the last kingdom of Egypt, the old, very old, ancient Egypt, came to an end. When the Romans conquered Egyptus after the death of uh, Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Cleopatra the pharaoh of Egypt and Mark Antony was a Roman. And they both killed themselves in 30 BC. After a series of events that led to to the Roman annexation of e Egypt, and then we have the imperial provinces here: Dalmatia, Moesia. 
Moise superior, Moise inferior. In today's Romania, Bulgaria, Thrakia. In today's Turkey, Greece, Bulgaria. And Germania. Superior, inferior. Belgica, Lugdunensis, Aquitania, and these three small alpine provinces. Uh, Alpes Poeniae, Alpes Cotiae, Alpes Maritimae. In southern Germany, what's today southern Germany? We have Raetia. And in Austria, we have Noricum. And we have Pannonia. In Slovenia, Hungary, I think. Lusitania, I have forgotten to fill with calendar. So the Iberian Peninsula was conquered in parts, started here in 200 BC, and then by 19 BC, I think, all of Green Spain northern parts here were also part of, of Rome. And these uh, northern African provinces, Mauritania, Mauritania Caesariensis and Mauritania Tingitana. I read a quite funny text about how Spain got its name. It's, a, it's called the Iberian Peninsula, and I think that's the Greek that called it Iberia. The Greeks, they were here before the Romans, and they named it after this river that was called Ebro or something. Today it's called Ebro. Um, but then I read that the Carthaginians, when they came here, they were basically more familiar with the landscapes in Northern Africa, where the animal called Hirax lives. Hirax is a very small mammal. And uh, you can only find it in Africa, not in Europe. And when they came here, the Carthaginians at some point, a long time ago, maybe 5th century BC or something, they thought they saw a lot of Hirax animals. But actually it was rabbits, but they hadn't seen rabbits. So they referred to this this land as the islands of Hyraxes. And in the Carthaginian language that was something like Isipanin. Um, their language 
which I think derives from an area here. So it's a Semitic language, the Phoenician language from the beginning, and then they they were traveling a lot and um, having a lot of colonies very far from from Phoenicia. So they call it Isip Hanim, and uh, the Greeks and the Romans then uh, started to use that word, but uh, yeah, made some modifications. Uh, of course, uh, according to their languages and as time went, so it became Hispania in in Rome and in Latin, and it became Spain and Espania. Here we have Tachia, or Tassia, or Tachia, I'm not sure. It's a car called Tachia from Romania. Um, quite late, this became a Roman province. There were the Tachian Wars um, between the Tachian king and the Emperor Trajan in the early 100s AD. When, uh, yeah, Trajan uh, defeated uh, the Dacian king and it became a Roman province, Dacia. Uh, during um, the time when Hadrian was the uh, emperor, or maybe it was uh, when Trajan was still emperor, because Trajan was emperor until 117, and then Hadrian became emperor after him, so 117. was the year when starting with the um, Trajan 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 I'm not sure how to pronounce it Trajan was emperor and um, and uh, Adrian became emperor Had Adrian who built the the Hadrian war So then um, Rome got these three provinces from the Parthian Empire for a couple of years only, Armenia, Assyria and Mesopotamia. This was a bit earlier. This was in 43 to 84 AD. We have the Roman conquest of Britain. But it was yeah, quite late. It was in the imperial time. Imperial Rome. Uh, and it was during the Emperor Claudius. when Britain was conquered. So, yeah, 80, 84 AD, the conquest was completed, and uh, the wall was uh, constructed in AD 122 when Hadrian was the emperor. So, 
So, now what I want to do is to point out some cities. Let's start here in the south west. Lusitania, we have the capital Emerita Augusta along the Guadiana River. It's now part of Spain, Extremadura, and um, Today it's the town or city Merida, and here you can find a lot of Roman remains, very well preserved. For example, the Teatro Romano, the Roman theater. I would love to go there someday. In uh, Terra Conensis. We have along the Tejo River, Toletum, and it's today's uh, Toledo, south of Madrid, in uh, Castilla-La Mancha region. So there are a lot of, of Roman remains, I think. Also a nice aqueduct. Another nice aqueduct is very well preserved in Segovia, north of Madrid. Then we have Taraco, or modern day Tarragona. Also, the theater, I guess, can be seen here. And uh, Cartago Nova, modern day Cartagena in uh, Murcia. It's cool that it was named the new Carthage, probably by the Carthaginians, I guess. In Hispania Baetica, we have Gades, or modern day Cadiz, along the Guadalquivir River. And we have Italica near Seville. And uh, Cordoba. In Cordoba, I guess. It's the same name today. So you can find a lot of Roman remains in. Andalusia. Also in Eastern Lusitania, we had the city Salamantica. Today's Salamanca, I think it's called. Not exactly the same name, but almost. I think Emerita Augusta was the capital of Lusitania, while Taraco was the capital of Taraconensis. In Narbonensis we have Narbo, which 
today's Narbonne, French city. And uh, Massilia, today's Marseille. Along Garonne River we had uh, Portigala, Roman city. Today's Porto. In northern Aquitania we have Limonum. Close to today's Poitiers. Along the Seine River we have Lutetia. And that's modern day Paris. And in Britannia we have Londinium. I guess London was a Roman city from, from the start. Victrix, modern day Chester, also Eboracum, modern day York, in Germania Inferior. of the Rhine River. The modern city of Cologne developed from this spot. And along Moselle in Belgica. We have Augusta Treverorum. And that's modern day Trier, I think, in Germany. Or, yeah, just at the border to Luxembourg, in the Rhineland Palatinate. And in Raetia. Augusta Vindelicorum. And that's today's Augsburg, Augsburg in in uh, Bavaria, southern Germany. In Noricum, along the Danube River, we have Lauriacum. in modern day Austria and not far from Lauriacum we have also Vindobona that's modern day Vienna Aquincum along Danube as well where Danube take this sharp turn to the south. That's uh, modern day Budapest. In Dalmatia we have Salone along the coast, quite close to Split modern Croatia. In the very eastern part of Italy we had uh, Aquileia. The 
It was the first city in the inter Italian peninsula that was sacked by Attila the Hun. We came here from the east. We have Mediolanum, northern Italia, today's Milan. Cremona, along the Po River. And in Corsica we have Aleria. In Sardinia, Caralis. Today's uh, Cagliari. And in Sicilia we have Panormus, the northern coast, today's Palermo, and to the south Syracuse, Syracusae, this very important city in ancient uh, Mediterranean world. Here in southern Italian peninsula, Tarentum, today's Taranto, Neapolis, same as today, and Rome. where it all started. Tingi in Mauritania Tingitana Caesarea in Mauritania Caesariensis Sirta, Utica, Carthago, in Africa, Proconsularis, and also Leptis Magna. Sirene in Sirenaica et Creta Alexandria in Egyptus also Memphis these very important cities in ancient Egypt. Pietra, famous ancient city here in Arabia, Petraea. Hiero Solima, the Romans, word for Jerusalem, the name for Jerusalem. Here somewhere. We have a city called Yerash in modern day Jordan. Also, there you can find some very well preserved remains. For example, Hadrian's Arch from the 2nd century AD. Tyrus, in the southern parts of Syria province. Palmyra, Antioquia, all of them in Syria province, and in 
Gili, uh, Cilicia, we have Tarsus. And on Cyprus, Eastern coast, Salamis. Caesarea, second city here called Caesarea. We had it in Mauritania, Caesarensis as well, northern Africa. Named after Julius Caesar, probably. In Cappadocia. In Cappadocia we also have uh, Trapezus by Pontus Euxinus. Nicaea in Bithynia at Pontus. In Asia we have Ephesus and Miletus. And um, the second most important city, I guess, Byzantium. I mean, when it comes to Roman, the history of Roman Empire. Byzantium, the second capital after Rome, was the capital for several hundreds of years. They actually changed it to Byzantium. This was in 330 AD and it was the Emperor Constantine who made this change and uh, renamed it the old, from the old Greek name Byzantium to Constantinople. Today this city is called Istanbul. Yeah, in um, 395, the Roman Empire was split in two halves. The Eastern part, Eastern Empire, and the Western Empire. And quite soon the Western Empire fell, because there were so much invasions from Germanic tribes, Visigoths, Vandals. Because it was the migration time period in Europe, Northern Europe, all over Europe. And, um, yeah, Rome fell in 476 AD. And the Germanic king, Odoacer, or Odoacer, became the first king of Italy. But the Eastern uh, Roman Empire continued as an entity uh, until the uh, 15th century, so yeah, a thousand more years. It was a very long time, until 1453 actually when the Turks took control over this area, all this area. So it was called the Byzantine Empire also. In Moesia Superior we have uh, Naissus, in modern day Serbia. Along Maritza River we have Filippopolis, modern day Plovdiv in Bulgaria. And in Moesia Inferior we have Turosturum. Long Danube and the Tomis by the 
Black Sea Coast. And Olbia. By the Dnipro River. In Dakia. Apulum. By along the Muresh River. Today, Apollum is uh, the city Alba Iulia in Romania. And this city here, Napoca. Today it's called uh, Cluj Napoca in Romania. And here, Sarmitz Getusa or Ulpia. Trajana Sarmitze Getusa In Macedonia we have Thessalonica Thessaloniki Today's Greece. And on the western coast, Dirachium, modern day Duresh, in Albania, northern Albania. In Epirus province, we have Bustrotim or Bustrotum, also in Albania, modern day Albania, but the southern part, south of Sarande. Sarande is uh, very close to Greece, the Greek border. Uh, and this place, called also Butrint today, I have actually visited this place, this uh, remains. It was very cool to see. The theater and uh, there were some um, buildings, I remember. Uh, you can you could actually walk into some buildings. There were still uh, walls and roof, and there were these bath a lot of bath houses that had been like swimming pools, I guess. So yeah, it was very fun to see. When I was visiting Sarande a couple of years ago. And Corinth. Athene. Into the Far East. Taxata in Armenia. Ktesiphon in Assyria. And Babylon along Euphrates River in Mesopotamia. And Ankira in Galatia, modern day Ankara. I think I forgot to tell you that uh, Tomis in Moesia Inferior is modern day Constanta in Romania. And uh, Turostorum is modern day Silistra in Romania, I guess. Or if it could be Bulgaria. Not sure exactly where the border is. And I forgot to paint some 
There he is here, I see. Southern part of Mesopotamia. And also the Balearic Islands. thing I would like to do is to label the map. I will write some of the provinces names but I will not write all of them because there are so many and some of them have so long names so it will take me forever and also it will be too messy because it will be too small text and everything. I'm going to use this purple ink and uh, again the deep pen to write some of the names I have. Some of them I have al already mentioned quite a lot because I found them interesting or they've been quite important historically or just because I, I like the name. I'm going to try to use a Latin script because uh, our modern um, uppercase letters, the Latin script, derives from Roman times, the Roman uh, Empire. This type of writing was developed by the Romans. So I will start here with the Tarak. Condensis. Also, I can maybe zoom in a bit. So this type of uppercase letters with the small serifs at the end of each uh, stroke derives from when the Romans carved their letters into stone. And you had these uh, serifs because they were carved. It like was a result of that. And today we choose it because we're used to the to the look of, of those types of letters. And they had no lower lowercase letters at this point. And they did not have the letter U. So I would like to to write Lusitania here, but instead of U I will use uh, the letter V that was used before it was replaced with U for vowels.
sorry. Just Africa, shorter name for it. to write Egyptus. in the very center, Italia. looks like it says Italia there, but it should be Italia. And uh, Dacia, or Dacia, or however it's pronounced.
just because I think I have room for it here, I would like to add Norikum. This big province here, Lugdunensis. The last one, Cappadocia. video, found it relaxing and interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Stay safe. See you soon.